Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at the new version 2 release of the Colt K8 Pi Hat uh, Pixel Controller. So this has recently been uh, released and is the new version uh, which features, well, e-fuses. There's no fuses down here like there were on the old one. You see at the bottom we had fuses before and these have been replaced now by the new e-fuses. So let's go through some of the features of the board first of all. Then we'll get it connected up to a Raspberry Pi powered on and we'll look at driving some pixels and then demonstrate the e-fuses and how they work. So what does the new board do for us? Well, it gives us of course eight pixel outputs here for your traditional WS2811 style pixels or WS281X style pixels. It gives us an OLED display so that we can see what FPP is up to. And there's some buttons on the board here to navigate through the menus. We've got a few GPIO pins exposed so we can connect uh, switches and other things to make stuff happen. We have three differential outputs. So they're used for connecting up differential or long range receivers. Uh, this one is a, a simple one. This is a Wally's Lights basic receiver. So we run four ports via a piece of Cat5 from one of these. You'll need to supply it with power, connect it up and away it goes. If you want to do more than one, then of course the F16 V3 standard or F48 V3 from Falcon, uh, you can daisy chain up to three of these off each of these ports. Or you could move on to the newer version 4 Falcon boards. Uh, you can daisy chain up to six of these off each one of these outputs. Or even move up to one of the bigger boys like the SRX4 here which allows you to connect lots of outputs off one Cat5 uh, port. Uh, note that the Cat5 there is differential data, it's not Ethernet, so it can't go via a switch. Uh, needs to be a direct link from the controller to the smart receiver. Uh, moving around the side, we've got uh, three pins for a serial port, so you can connect a DMX uh, moving head or a snow machine, smoke machine, something like that. We have a battery socket here. The, this board has a real-time clock on board. So if you turn the power off to your Raspberry Pi, uh, normally the Pis get amnesia because they don't have a real-time clock. So this will keep it in check. And then we've got a 40-pin I.O. header here to connect to a Falcon V3 style 16 port uh, pixel output board over this shoulder, just up there. Look at that, we've got an F16 V3 up the top there and there's a 16 board just underneath it. You've got a jumper on here so that you can choose whether to power the Raspberry Pi directly from the hat or power it separately. Um, the hat here can run either 5 volts or 12 volts. Whichever you feed it, it will still pass 5 volts down to power the Pi underneath. Uh, and there's no jumpers or anything like that on this board to set for 5 or 12 volts. It would just work. And then down the bottom here, we have a 30 amp power input. So we can connect it directly to a Meanwell RSP 320 or an LRS 350 depending on where you are in the world and, and which one's available to you. So let's get it hooked up to a Pi, power it up and see what it can do. So I'm going to tip it upside down. Now I've got a Raspberry Pi uh, 3B Plus here. Uh, this is my preferred option at the moment still for the lighting uh, hobby. It's got plenty of power for FPP goes just as fast as I need it to. It's only got one gig of RAM, 
but FPP won't use all of the one gig anyway, so no big no big deal. There's no point in going for a Pi 4 or Pi 5 with 8 gig of RAM because FPP just doesn't use it. It's not that processor, it's not that memory intensive. Uh, the only gotcha with the 3B Plus is its Ethernet speed. Uh, while it's touted as a 1 gigabit Ethernet connection, uh, it's connected via the USB bus and so is throttled to a maximum of about 300 megabits per second. But that's still plenty fast enough to upload sequences in, in my view anyway. Um, and of course this one has got onboard Wi-Fi, so it will happily connect uh, to your Wi-Fi and allow you to connect to it that way. Uh, and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to use the Wi-Fi. So let's get it connected to the board. So if I bring the two together, there we go. On it goes. So that's now sat on there quite nicely, uh, all ready to go. I just need to, uh, oh, there we go. I'm tracking that. I just need to put the memory card in, uh, which has my copy of FPP on it. So let's put that into there. And there we go. So that is now ready for us to run FPP. All I've got to do is give it some juice or some power, as you might say. So I've got a trusty meanwhile power supply over here and I'm going to hook it up now. So I've got a V plus on the left and ground or V minus on the right. So I'll drop those in there. And here's my screwdriver. So we'll just tighten those up. Now I've used 10 AWG power cable to go from my mean well into here. Uh, some people think it's overkill. Um, and 12 will do the job, but it probably will, but I prefer to err on the side of caution uh, and the fatter the wire, the less of a voltage drop I'm gonna get from the power supply into the board. So I'm gonna stick with my 10 AWG, thank you, and uh, sleep quite comfortably. So that's in there, that's in there. All we need to do now is to, uh, to apply power to the mean well, and we'll get it powered up. Uh, this one is an RSP32012, so we're going to be running on 12 volts today. There we go, so we've got power to the board, and we can see the individual power indicators are illuminated uh, on the board there. And same on the other four, the other side, we can see those. And we can see that the OLED has jumped into life and is telling us the network name of FPP, the host name, and it's booting. It's also telling us the IP address now so that we can ready to navigate to it through our web browser. Now I'm going to connect a couple of strings of pixels to it. You'll notice that once it's booted, the power indicator LEDs for the uh, pixel outputs have all extinguished, they've gone out. And that's because the system has booted, there's no data going to the pixel ports at the current time, and so there's no point in having the pixels powered. So it's turned the power off to the pixels, They're, they are not powered. Um, so let's connect up our strings. Oh, I've got a couple of strings ready in a a typical Blue Peter moment. Um, Americans, you can look it up, but basically it means here's one I prepared earlier, and here they are. Here's some that I prepared earlier. So I'm going to plug this string into port number three, and I'm going to plug this string into port number one. There we are. We've got a couple of strings of pixels connected. So they're ready to go. So let's jump onto FPP software and have a quick whiz through. Now, one of the other features on the Cape is of course the fact that it's got an EEPROM on board and that will tell part the Pi and the FPP what style of hat is connected. So I haven't had to configure anything in the software here 
to tell it that it's got this hat on board because it's discovered it automatically. So we can see running along the top that FP, that's the host name of FPP, is currently idle. The temperature on the board is at lovely 17 degrees C. Our wireless IP address, because it's on Wi-Fi. Um, now I have already pre-configured that before I started this recording. Uh, you would have to go through and configure your Wi-Fi settings yourself, um, as you would expect. It's got a network time, so it's got a time of 4 p.m. in this case. The Pi that's driving it is a 3B+, and the hat comes from Colt Lights. Now, because this is a new Pi hat uh, with e-fuses, we get an extra option in the status menu. So we can go to status control, and we get this current monitor option, which only appears if you have a suitable hat. So there we go. So this is the current monitor page where it will tell us what the current state of the ports are. At the moment, we can see that they are all disabled because we have the cross next to the enabled on each of them. And that corresponds with the LEDs on the ports themselves, so that we can see that there's no data, uh, no power, in fact, going to them. We can see the status, so whether the port would be enabled or not, um, if it could, and the current power consumption being drawn on each port. Now, at the moment, the ports are turned off, so that is zero milliamps. And if I go down to the bottom here, we have an option now to count the number of pixels so that we can double check that we've got the right number of pixels connected to each port. Or if a string has failed somewhere along its length, we can see where it's failed because it will count up to the failure. Now, I haven't actually counted the number of pixels in each of these two strings. So let's have a look and see how many pixels we've got. There we go, we've got a little brief moment of light, and then we've got one pixel illuminated uh, here, and we've got another one illuminated here. So this is the string on port number three, and this is the string on port number one. Now looking at FPP, I can see that we have 10 pixels connected to port number one, and we have nine pixels connected to port number three. So let's just have a quick look. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yep, there's 10 on port 1, that's correct. And on port 3, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, that's correct. So it's correctly counted the number of pixels on both strings. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into input-output settings and set up the number of pixels on each output. Then, once it knows that we've got pixels on the outputs, we can do a bit of display testing, and we'll show you the port uh, power in action. So if I go to input output setup and channel outputs, now I've already been playing as you can see, and I've told it that I've got 10 pixels on port one, and I've told it that I've got 10 pixels on port 3. Now we've just proved that that's incorrect, so I'm going to change that to 9. Now I've told it that we have 0 pixels on all of the other ports, so it knows that it doesn't need to turn those on when we're trying to play a sequence, because there's no pixels connected to them. So let me save that. I'm going to restart FPPD to, because the config's changed. There we go. And the power lights have gone. There we go. FPP has just finished restarting. The power lights have now gone off on the board. So we know there is no power there at the moment. 
So let's go into display testing and get a bit of RGB action. There we go, we'll go for an, what have we got? Let's go for a cycle RGB and we'll enable. There we go. So we can see now that our pixels are busy doing their thing. We have power enabled only on the two ports that the pixels are connected to. And it's quite happy playing the sequence. Now what happens if something goes wrong and under normal circumstances, the fuse would get blown. So if we have a short or something like that on one of the lines. Now on the end of this string here, I have left the ends of the wires bare so that I can short them out to simulate a fault. So let's join them together bang. I've created a short circuit and this string of pixels has now extinguished and I can see that the power indicator light has gone off on the board. So the fuse detected correctly that there was a problem and it's powered down the string nice and quickly whilst leaving the rest of the display running. So let's now go and have a look again at our status control current monitor page to see what that's telling us. In here, we can see that port one is still enabled and is green, it's happy. Port three is no longer enabled and the status is now across, that is unhappy. And if I hover above it, I can see that it says E-Fuse triggered. So there's been a problem. Well, we know there was a problem. It's, uh, it's me. Um, so we've, we've, been, we've identified remotely now that the E-Fuse has been triggered. We've gone out. We've looked at the board. We've, rep we've fixed the fault. I've separated the two connections. And we can now go back into FPP and tell it that we've fixed the problem. If I now click on the enabled checkbox, there we go, that re-enables the fuse and we can see that the pixels are once again doing their thing. So there we go, that's covered uh, very quickly, the E-Fuses element on the new K8 uh, version 2 board. And I think you'll agree that's a worthy addition to be able to see uh, remotely, even if your FPP is uh, stuck in a box outside or uh, maybe up on a roof ledge or something, you can go into here and you can see what's going on. And I think that's a great advantage. Um, the pixel counting will also uh, be useful, I'm sure, to make sure that you know you've got the right number of pixels connected. Uh, and I think this is going to be a great little board uh, and a welcome addition to those available in the hobby. So I hope you found this useful. Take care and uh, we'll see you on the next one, which hopefully won't be as long this time. Take care. Bye for now.